Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Fung, one of the uh, tools that this government set up supposedly to counter foreign interference and foreign disinformation during elections was the directive on the critical election incident public protocol. Are you familiar with that protocol? Uh, I'm not familiar with that You're protocol. You're not familiar with it. Okay. Uh, needless to say, uh, it provided that uh, candidates uh, who are the target of disinformation ought to be infor informed, barring national security considerations. Now, uh, my former colleague, Kenny Chu, was drowning in a sea of disinformation in Steveston, Richmond East, and he wasn't alone in that regard. Several other conservative candidates uh, were, including former Member of Parliament Alice Wong. Mr. Chu was kept in the dark. Uh, in the face of disinformation, but Madam Justice Ho concluded there was a reasonable possibility that those narratives from the Beijing regime impacted the result in that writing. Now, you spoke uh, about um, the PRC and the connections between the PRC and certain media within Canada. And I would note in that regard that at page 17 of the NSICOP report, uh, it, the, the ANSICOP noted that, quote, uh, most of these media outlets in the GBA, in the Greater Vancouver area, were linked to the PRC via partnership agreements with the Chinese News Service, the Chinese Communist Party's primary media entity. So here you not only have foreign disinformation, from Beijing amplified on social media platforms, including WeChat, but you actually have news outlets uh, that are amplifying that disinformation that are Canadian-owned. So can you speak to that uh, and, and, and some of the methods that the Chinese regime is using and how that can be countered? Um, because it's, it certainly was something that uh, may have impacted the result uh, in more than one riding. So let's say for the Kenny Chu's case, right? So it was first started in WeChat and WhatsApp. A piece of this this disinformation appeared on the social media, and then it was spread on the China, mainly on the Chinese uh, social media platform. And then the next day, um, there's a, a Chinese propaganda newspaper, Today Commercial News. Uh, try to basically copy paste that message from the WeChat and then amplify it on the on the propaganda machines, and then after that many other Chinese news articles were read, was written uh, in on different Chinese web websites and then it feed back to the social media, and on then on the radio stations and newspaper in Vancouver area they also try to uh, uh, have a uh, or re, re, uh, basically invite some bias uh, commentators on the radio stations to amplify this again. So this is not just on the media, because they are uh, indirectly controlled by the adver uh, advertisement from the Chinese merchant in that area. So, and then when they try to, let's say when they, uh, when they, uh, some of the uh, organization try to organize an event, they will invite the uh, Chinese consulate to attend those events, and then they will put those Chinese consulates at a higher position as a VVIP than the MP in Canada. So if you are an attendee of that meeting, you will know that who is the real boss in there and who is the one who can make decision is the Chinese consulate. So this message passed to the Chinese merchant in Richmond or in the Vancouver area, in the area and then it will affect the, show, the, the media in that, in that area. 